bomb threat closes Iowa's largest construction site in southeast Iowa. I'll have a live report. The Johnson County Supervisors will discuss raising the county's minimum wage tomorrow during a work session. And one more Republican, this time John Kasich, is taking a run at the GOP presidential nomination. Live in high definition, from your 24-hour news source, you're watching KCRG TV 9 News at 5. A bomb threat stopped work for hundreds of construction workers at a $1.8 billion fertilizer plant in southeast Iowa. That threat forced authorities to evacuate the Iowa Fertilizer Company late this morning. That plant is under construction in Weaver, Iowa, just south of Burlington. It's been a controversial project because of large tax breaks the state and Lee County have given to Oriscom, the Egyptian company that owns the plant. The Lee County Sheriff's Office says someone wrote on the side of a porta potty that a bomb would go off at noon today. A worker saw that threat yesterday afternoon and called the Sheriff's Office. KCRG TV 9's Dave Fransman joins us live from that plant tonight. And Dave, have you heard anything about what was going on inside the plant this morning? Bruce, we spoke to some of the workers who were inside here, but for obvious reasons, they didn't want to go on camera fear of losing their jobs, but several described a somewhat confused situation with, say, workers in one part of the plant uh, working for one particular subcontractor being told to go home early, others not getting that message for a considerable period of time. Now, the Lee County Sheriff's Office said the threat was first noted, as you mentioned, on a portable restroom at the construction site. It mentioned a noon deadline today. Bomb sniffing dogs and officers went through the plant and vehicles. This morning, authorities actually began going through vehicles that were entering the construction site. Now, that created a massive traffic jam on nearby Highway 61, and that's what the closest neighbor certainly noticed. It, it was way late uh, for the traffic, and it was backed up further than I've ever seen it backed up. We couldn't get out on the highway this morning yet. They wouldn't let you through. And the people trying to get to the fertilizer plant, you had to honk your horn at them. Authorities say at least 36 security people were involved in that bomb search both yesterday and today. No one at the company, though, could be reached for any comment today. The Iowa Department of Natural Resources says there's really no especially hazardous material that's being stored at the plant currently, even though it will eventually manufacture fertilizer. Again, that's because it's still under construction. The plant is expected to open sometime late this year. Live in Lee County, Dave Fransman, KCRG, TV9 News. A crash near New Hall has killed a Vinton man. The Iowa State Patrol says a vehicle hit the man who stepped outside his car along Highway 30, just east of Highway 218, around 11 last night. Troopers say 61-year-old Michael Moore's vehicle broke down. Several witnesses say that's when he stepped into the roadway where a car hit and killed him. The State Patrol says ambulance workers treated and released the driver at the scene. We want to remind you that when you see news, call Newsline 9 after alerting authorities. Here's that number, 319-365-9999. You can also send us pictures or videos to newsroom at kcrg.com. I have a congressman, Rod Blum and Dave Lobsack, say construction of the Cedar Rapids flood management project needs to start soon. The 2008 flood caused close to $2.5 billion in property losses in the city. Congress authorized the project last year when it passed the Water Resources Reform and Development Act, but it still has not appropriated the $73 million in federal funds to build the project. Blum and Lobsack say the Army Corps of Engineers needs to address those delays to speed up the start of construction. The Cedar Rapids City Council has approved a flood management project that includes earthen levees, permanent flood walls, removable walls, and gates at the bridges. But the city is projecting it could take 20 years to build it all. The Johnson County Board of Supervisors may talk about increasing minimum wage within county limits. Johnson County Executive Assistant Andy Johnson says the board is expected to discuss putting into place an ordinance that would raise minimum wage in Johnson County. The supervisors are holding a work session around 10 tomorrow morning with this being the second item on their agenda. Several board members have been seen participating in recent protests titled Fight for 15. Johnson says details of the ordinance are still in the works.
Iowa's unemployment rate is down for the fourth time this year. That's according to figures the Iowa Workforce Development released this week. During the month of June, the state's unemployment rate dropped a tenth of a percentage to 3.7 percent. This is also a decrease from last June when the state's jobless rate was 4.4 percent. Iowa's unemployment rate is well under the U.S. average, which was 5.3 percent in June. Republican Donald Trump has fired back at an editorial in the Des Moines Register. On Monday, the newspaper said it's time for the real estate mogul to drop out of the 2016 presidential race. The editorial called Trump an unqualified and self-absorbed celebrity who is more concerned about promoting himself than addressing national issues. Well, this morning, Trump replied to that with a statement that said recent poll results showing him leading were too much for the register to bear. He considers the register to be one of the most liberal newspapers in the U.S. He also called it a dishonest and failing newspaper that's desperate to make a headline. The register's editor, Amelie Nash, then released a statement that said, his campaign has never contacted our staff with concerns about our reporting and has, in fact, complimented our coverage. She also said this editorial will have no effect on the register's coverage of Donald Trump. Speaking of presidential candidates, the Republicans have yet another one. Ohio Governor John Kasich jumped into the race this morning. He's the 16th major Republican running for the GOP nomination. Kasich launched his campaign in front of a crowd at Ohio State University. He's hoping his 18 years in Congress and now two terms as a swing state governor will help him stand out among all the candidates. Kasich briefly ran for the Republican nomination back in 2000. His last time here in Iowa was on June 24th. One local music business won a state award for its volunteerism today. West Music Company received the inaugural Give Back Iowa Award for the medium-sized business category. Give Back Iowa is an initiative that encourages employees in Iowa to volunteer in their communities. Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds was in Coralville to award West Music. 24 of the company's 210 employees participated in a six-week challenge, including providing music therapy to organizations in surrounding communities. They logged 650. 59 volunteer hours. I'm ecstatic. I'm extremely honored and proud of all the associates at West Music and their commitment to this challenge because it really is. It's about the Iowans and the people that we gave back to uh, through this challenge. West Music's president and CEO challenges every business in Iowa to participate in the initiative. In its first year, 50 businesses took part. Well, the campaign has started to raise money to help cover the medical expenses for a bald eagle that's died. The eagle's name was Edwina. In 1989, she flew into a road sign in Monona County, which led to the amputation of one wing. She then became an educational program animal on display for 26 years at Fontana Park in Hazleton. She died Sunday from a fungal respiratory infection. The Buchanan County Conservation Center works with Fontana Park to help pay the expenses for animal health care. But the eagle needed a lot of that care, which could mean there won't be enough money to help other animals for the next few months. And we have uh, bills that are over $2,000 for her health care, and the Buchanan County Conservation Board doesn't have that as part of the budgeted um, amount to, to work with our animals every year. Friends of Fontana Park, a nonprofit support group of the Conservation Center, is helping gather donations for the cause. For more information on how you can help, check out this web story at KCRG.com. One man who grew up in Cedar Rapids is crossing something big off his bucket list. He's riding on Ragbri for the first time. KCRG TV 9's John Campbell has his story coming up. This Dubuque woman has to do something illegal to treat her son with a form of medical marijuana that is legal in Iowa. Jennifer McFadden uses cannabis oil to treat her son's severe epilepsy that he has with other serious medical conditions. A state law approved more than a year ago made it legal to use cannabis oil for medical conditions, but not to make or sell the oil here. Cannabis oil is derived from marijuana plants and has low THC levels. THC is the element of marijuana that gets people high. Iowans need to get an ID card to use cannabis oil, but the Des Moines Register reports only 29 Iowa patients have obtained a card, largely because there's still no legal way to get cannabis oil in Iowa. KCRG TV 9's Dubuque Bureau Chief Katie Wiedemann joins us live. And Katie, you talked to a mom today who's just stuck trying to fade away around this law to try to help her son. 
Right. Jennifer McFadden, Jennifer McFadden has an Iowa-issued medical marijuana card. And since she can't buy it here, she actually has it shipped to her house from Colorado. But that is illegal under federal law to ship oil across state lines. So that means even though her son can legally use cannabis oil here in Iowa, it's still illegal for her to get it. Like any mother, Jennifer McFadden's greatest joy is her children. Her 12-year-old son, Liam, lives with several medical conditions. His primary diagnosis is Dervais syndrome, which is a severe form of epilepsy. He also has autism, is nonverbal, and has a mental cognition similar to an 18-month-old. Two weeks ago, Jennifer started giving him a tube of cannabis oil twice each day. I want to be cautious. You know, I, I've had him home a few different times and he's chatting a little more and whether it's ex he's excited or it's the oil, it's too early to say. These two spend as much time together as possible, but Liam lives full time at a federally licensed health care facility in Dubuque. It's still not considered legal under federal policy. So because they are governed by the government, <laughs> um, they're not allowed to administer and I can't even give it to him on site. So I have to take him off site and administer it and then take him back. Jennifer says that routine can be disruptive for Liam's mental health. For her, it means she's leaving work twice each day to give him the oil. I'm thrilled that I get to see my son twice a day, but for him, I think just the consistency of having it there and not having to worry about, you know, I'm fearful when it's January and I have to bundle him up and take him outside and tend to blow wind chills. But this mom says she'll do whatever she must to help improve her son's quality of life. That's your child and you, have, you don't know what your life would be without him. Despite it being illegal to ship cannabis oil across state lines, the federal government has not taken any steps to block shipments into Iowa. Meanwhile, Congressman Rod Blum recently co-sponsored a bill that would change the legal definition and remove cannabis from the legal definition of marijuana. Live in Dubuque, Katie Wiedemann, KCRG TV9 News. This past legislative session, lawmakers tried to expand Iowa's cannabis oil law to include other diseases and allow the production of the oil in the state. The Senate passed the bill. The House did not. One 61-year-old Minnesota man wants to fulfill one of his lifelong goals here in Iowa this week. But he, has, he has to bike 462 miles in seven days to do it. That story still to come here on TV9. On Ragbri all week long. Now, the bikers rode nearly 73 miles today from Fort Dodge to Eldora, where they'll be spending the night. Some stops along the way included the towns of Webster, Beth's favorite, Boondocks, oh, yeah. and Alden. Tonight, John Campbell has the story of a 61-year-old man who's enjoying Ragbri for the very first time. Great morning, beautiful sunrise, not a cloud in the sky. A lot better than yesterday morning. Meet 61-year-old Jeff Coleman of Edina, Minnesota. You doing the century today? No, absolutely not. I'm just happy to ride all the way across the state. I think that's enough. He's checking off a must-do from his bucket list. At that age where I'm trying to do things to stay in shape and was talking to my wife one night, said, you know, I've always wanted to do that rag bry, and she said, well, just go do it. Although he resides in Minnesota, he grew up in Cedar Rapids, played baseball at Kennedy, and attended Iowa State. Now he's looking forward to riding into Hiawatha on Thursday. Old Kennedy High School buddies, Brad Bennett and Mark Hazlett, uh, and the, I just want to make sure I get back on the road the next morning. But yeah, we're, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing those guys. Hey. Coleman has family ties to the Tuttles. His great-great-grandfather, Osmond Tuttle, founded Norway, Iowa. That's why Jeff is looking forward to the Sutliff Bridge where some scenes of his favorite movie, The Final Season, were shot. Yeah, I'm going to try to find that. I, oh, I don't want to get lost, but I'm going to try to find it, yeah. Are you ready? Uh, it's just coming back home. It's really, uh, it's really been a fantastic experience. And Nicole, Jeff hopes his friends take him to the Amanas Thursday night for dinner. What's up at 6? Uh, well, as you know, we had a stop on the map today called Boondocks, yeah, yeah. Iowa. <laughs> so we talked to a few riders from out of town about what they thought about Boondocks, and we'll have their story coming up tonight at 6. All right. We're not in the Boondocks. We're in Eldora riding Rag Bri 43 for KCRG TV 9. Down in the, the Boondocks. boondocks. All right, thanks so much, John and Nicole. <laughs> They'll be riding Ragbury all week. You can follow them every mile of the way on TV9 and KCRG.com. We'll be broadcasting our full newscast tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday from the Ragbury route as riders stop in Cedar Falls, Hiawatha, and Coralville.